there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from My Steam Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another beautiful Steam Workshop item, this being another vanilla creation. This one is the Interbus 3900 Space Yacht, and it is absolutely beautiful, and it really has that civilian feel that a lot of ships out there tend to lose by being over-armoured, over-protective, and I think how he's done this is by he's used this white-grey combination with lots of glass, leaving it very exposed. And as usual, we'll take a look around the exterior, and then we'll pop inside and just envy at the beautiful interior of this craft so we've got two decks here we've got the upper deck that you can see where many of the vips will reside for the night and we have the lower deck where entertainment and sort of fuel and power sources tend to happen at the back there where and also we'll have the hangar in the back but we'll explain that more when we get to that design itself so as we come around to the front you notice we have the observation slash dining room at the front there and as we come a little bit further back we have the bridge itself and i just like that stepped sort of design and down to the side we've got ourselves a docking bay so we can dock to resupply let on our vips let off vips and whatnot and up in these upper areas, we start to move into the luxury sort of apartments. We've got one luxury apartment, and then we've got some smaller VIP sort of cabins as well. And I just like how they've got so much glass from the inside. If I just quickly tuck in here, you can just see how much the client can actually view. It is amazingly beautiful. As we come down the side, you can see more of this ribbon. And the ribbon with the stairs kind of just gives me this feeling that it's much stronger, the actual ship itself. And as we come into this rear area, we've got the first neighbor, Nasoft cell thruster. And what he's done is created these steps that stagger down to the side and they kind of look like vents that are probably accepting oxygen to cool the engines when it's in sort of a planetary mode. Coming a little bit further down the side, we've also got this cool little ball design he's added there to create a little bit of detail. And there's a lot of staggering and depth that is added into the engine bay cell itself. As we come to the rear of the ship, we've got ourselves a little, little hangar bay and we've got this absolutely beautiful sort of dome area that surrounds the pool. Yes. There is a pool on this ship. I'll we'll have to show you that when we get inside. So let's make entrance. We're going to enter through one of the VIP sort of entrance rooms on the side here. So I'll spawn my little legs in. And what is really quite exciting about this is we've spawned ourselves into a wall, I believe. Let's see if we can fix that out. Spawn ourselves a little bit further in. There we go. So as we enter ourselves into this ship, you'll notice the detailing in each one of these interiors. I, I feel that this is one of the best interiors I've seen on a Villanilla ship in a very long time. So as we enter in here, we've got the uh, Galaxy Missing Alert, various different tellies, and that's just a space ball in the center of there. And from that standard sort of position, it looks like it's some sort of standard, really nice little idea. Some seating, of course, and an oxygen generator there. Over here, we've got the crew quarters. The crew quarters of this ship are very cramped. We've just got four sort of cells, and we've got a little desk here where you could call home after a long sort of flight. All hands on decks. A little bit of a poster or television up there. And now here's one of them extremely beautiful areas. I'll turn the lights off. As we enter into here, we have the dining call slash observation deck. You can imagine rushing down here, one of the VIPs on his sun lounger with his cell phone or whatever sort of galactic telephone device they have at this time just lying on his sunbed looking out across whichever area they're in for the day or you could even have a nice business room in here as well just really nicely laid out it feels really sort of luxury and that's the sort of feel i guess he's going for with this cruise liner so as we go back into the sort of the waiting room we've got the kitchen over on this side we have the main dishes all displayed upon that sign so there's some burgers hot dogs not doesn't really seem like super luxury food for a yacht and as we come into this area, we've got the lovely interior detail. This is what I love when they combine a small ship block with large ship blocks and they just pull it off really beautifully. So you can see, you could imagine washing up in the sink perhaps there, maybe grilling some burgers or whatnot on the stoves there and doing some cooking. I think there's a little bit of a guidebook here, smoothie recipe book on that telly or tablet. Very modern, very cool indeed. So let's actually go a little bit further up into the ship itself. So we've got a space zero. And what I really like about this is if we actually have a look on this sign, we actually have the very ship that we're on board on a poster. Now that is really cool. A really nice little touch doing your custom sort of posters and whatnot. We'll go down to the upper deck first. I was gonna go in the higher area. Actually, no, we'll go down to the bottom and we'll go explore the lower section. 
So this lower section into here is more sort of maintenance sort of areas where the crews would be accessing. So we can come into here and we've got these small little escape areas if we need to where we can load the cargo and whatnot for the, the haul aboard without really getting in the way of the VIPs. So just a nice little considerate area to do that. And if we come back up into here, you can see we've got another one of these areas where we can access the cargo and the oxygen aboard the ship. So we'll tuck ourselves back into this area and we'll come up one staircase. So that room wasn't super detailed because it was just a maintenance sort of shaft. But as we come up into here, you can see we start to get a little bit more detailed. We've got the core personnel only room. So we've got this nice orangey glow with the core supposedly down below and the computers controlling it. And then down the sides, we've got ourselves a reactors with some information and navigation information on as well. Another airlock that separates us into this section. That is the beautiful little hangar room. Say maybe one of the crews or maybe one of the VIPs wants to venture out to an area for a particular day. One of the yachtsmen could take them out. You can see we've got a camera up there. We've got um, the lower area here we can access with these stairs. And we can just board our little craft and head out to that particular area. Just a really nice idea. We've got the hydrogen fuel tanks located behind there. Something that I really like about this ship is it seems to take the sort of makes the best use of space possible. Let's look at the detailing on the upper ceiling. Very nice indeed, using them catwalks upside down. So as we come up onto this deck. Now this deck itself, as we venture up a few flights of stairs, is where VIPs will sort of tend to be. We've got the pool here at the back that we'll explore. Look at that. Wow, I can just imagine after a really hard day of paperwork or on my cruise that I've paid lots of space money for, jumping into that pool. Look at that, really nice little bit of water, a little bit of a diving board at this end. We can have a jump off into the pool itself. That's just a projector. So if you do jump off that head first, you will break your neck. And off to the side here, we've got two little showers to cool off. And we're in the main corridor then where the VIPs will be staying. So we've got these small VIP rooms where we've got like two tables and a double bunk. We've got obviously lights and whatnot for these areas as well. And we've got a telly that's controllable. Obviously, there's nothing coming on these tellies at the moment. And we've got a small shower in that area that I quite like. It's got that little hose thing coming down from the top there. So let's actually move up. So these rooms are pretty much the same. But then we can head into the sort of VIP area. So this is the last of them same sort of rooms. This one's just got a bit of better lighting because the sun's on this side. So you can see he's added this little staircase up the side here. So you could climb into your bunk. Just a nice little bit of detailing. Obviously, you've got your tire and just this whole mechanism is connected up by that rotor up at the top there. So if you ever wanted to do a small ship in a large ship, this is just how you can do it. So we'll drop down ourselves here and we'll head into the VIP sort of quarters. So we've got the med bay slash recovery center. So maybe you've had a little injury, you've been bitten by some sort of space monster on the, one of the planets, then there's all the sort of surgical care, as well as some cryo base so you can store yourself extra body parts. That's always important in space travel. More different signposts. So this one's quite a cool one. Engineers needed. Join us on the Taurus colony. And then there's a little sign, and I think it secretly reads saying, keep away. Or keep out or something i don't know but there's some other space vehicles maybe designed by himself as well we're watching you security systems and into this area we've got the vip area so we've got this beautiful little table that he's kind of just used a desk and he's painted but look how he staggered that block off you can imagine sitting out there very nice and then in here we've got the private sort of bathroom we've got one of these sun lounges with a little bed here's the private bathroom we've got the shower there of course we've got the toilet that's just a thruster <laughs> And then in this area, we've got a little desk with a few items on his desk. He's got a space ball, picture of the original space engineers thing, and a few more schematics and whatnot. It could be a captain's quarters, could be a VIP area, but I think it's more VIP focused. So heading up into this area, we have the bridge. Now, what I really like about this bridge is all the readouts. So on this side, we've got a nice little readout display. We've got the landing gears information. We've got percentages. And we can obviously turn all these on and off with these option buttons on these side and on the same side we've got here. So let's take this craft off and just see how it handles. We've also got these smaller display areas giving us readouts on the jump drives and the cargo display. So there's a lot you can do with this ship. But let's actually take this guy off. So we're going to begin with disconnecting our landing gears. And we're just going to do a really nice slow takeoff. So whoever's flying this thing has got to be a veteran sort of pilot because then VIPs wouldn't really want a rough sort of flight. So a nice little takeoff. We'll add a little bit of acceleration to it. And we can slowly cruise across the planet. Like be, this being a cruise liner, the turning radius is not super great. And you can see how it really is affected by gravity quite a lot. But out in space, this thing is damn fast. So it's not really something you want to mess with. But just look at that. 
an unusual looking ship, but it just feels so civilian in design. I absolutely love it. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time. There'll be a link to this down in the description below.